receive. Sometimes we mix up that peace with being comfortable and having things the way we want them to be. And I don't believe that's what you had in mind when you told the disciples, peace be with you. I don't think you had that in mind when you spoke peace to others. Lord, teach us about these words that we might find the true meaning and live that true meaning as we pass the peace of the Lord to one another. And now may the words of my mouth and meditations in our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Savior and our Redeemer. Amen. Hallelujah, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Well, when you came to church last week, well, you didn't really come to church last week, did you? It was Easter, of course, and we were all home watching on our screens from that standpoint. But did you notice as you watched on the screen the, the difference and the change of the church's decor? The colors, the sober symbolism, the quiet and solemn hymns of Lent and in their place were the white paramount, the paramounts that we have, the altar, the beautiful flowers, 
everything changed dramatically. The scent of the Easter flowers, the, the joyful hymns singing about the resurrection of our Lord. From gloom and sadness to explicit joy. From no hallelujahs to singing hallelujahs, speaking hallelujahs. Well, this idea of replacing the somber with something festive for Easter is not just something we do in our order of worship. It's the essence of the Christian faith. It's the essence of the Easter season. A few minutes ago, you heard the traditional gospel account for the Sunday after Easter from John chapter 20. Now, most of the time, we focus on doubting Thomas, don't we? You probably have heard many, many sermons on that. That portion of the reading took place one week after Jesus' resurrection. So the timing is really natural for that. But today, today we're going to focus on the first reading, which describes Jesus' appearance to disciples on Easter evening. So can we go back a week to Easter evening? You see, this was the first appearance of Jesus to a larger gathering of his disciples. And in that appearance, we see Jesus replacing the somber and the ordinary with something a lot more festive and joyful. The presence, the living presence of the risen Savior Jesus came to his disciples with Easter greetings. He replaced the fear the disciples had with peace. And he gave meaninglessness that the disciples had and replaced that with a mission for them. Now on that first Easter evening, Jesus' disciples were afraid. They were very afraid. I guess it's easy to forget that because we know the whole story, but but put yourselves in their shoes for a moment and at that moment they were huddled together. They locked the doors. They were in fear. Remember last Sunday's gospel? Jesus' disciples for the most part did not believe the resurrection until Easter evening. Jesus' disciples for the most part didn't believe, and what's more, if the Jewish religious leaders sought to kill Jesus, is it unreasonable to think that Jesus' disciples were next in line? And given that they still doubted the resurrection and had just, and had just seen the fierce hatred of Jesus' enemies firsthand, it's, it's no wonder why these huddled disciples look like a bunch of scared pussycats. But then Jesus appears. He appears miraculously among them in their presence in a room that was locked. The risen Jesus was now in a state of exaltation in which he made no attempt to hide his divine power as he'd done previously. But the risen Jesus is still the human Jesus he shows the nail marks on his hands and the spear wound in his side. They're still there. Testifies to his suffering and death. And the risen Jesus takes their fear away and he play, replaces it with peace. His first statement to those fearful disciples, disciples was, be with you. Peace, or shalom, if you happen to know the Easter greeting from the evening. But you know, it was so much more than that. The peace that Jesus proclaimed on that first Easter night was attached to all he had done for them by the cross and by the tomb. The peace not only took away the disciples' fear, it took away the sin of the world. 
the sin of the world. And that fear was taken, when it was taken away, was filled now with joy and faith in their hearts. Peace not only took away the disciples' fear, but the sins of the world. Now in the theological world, uh, something that many people aren't uh, totally familiar with, but they hear about it, apologetics is the process of defending the Christian faith. I think it's important to defend the Easter gospel and explain why the resurrection is fact, not fiction. I've noticed that a defense of the resurrection often makes non-Christians very uncomfortable. It puts Christianity in a new realm. It shows why we cannot dismiss the gospel as a mere Christian religious story. It reveals that we need to come to grips with the risen Jesus, and that faith in him is absolutely essential for eternal life. Interesting as it is, non-Christians aren't the only ones who can become uncomfortable with apologetics. Thinking about the factual nature of Jesus' death and resurrection can also make Christians squirm. I mean, you know, we can just kind of, well, so what's the I mean, it's kind of like sometimes we get into a church mode, if you know what I'm talking about. We, we go through the motions of worship and perhaps allow our minds to wander and to separate ourselves from what is taking place in worship. Maybe that's happening to you right now. Maybe you look outside and, oh, the sun is shining. Maybe it's afternoon. And maybe you're been distracted by one of the kids or, or something else. People are up and walking around. It's easy to be distracted, isn't it? The devil works in mighty ways. You see, but the reminder that what we're talking about is truly a fact. The Easter resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and it should jolt us back to reality. The message we hear in this place is not just a, a spiritual tradition. The message of the crucified and risen Jesus is fact, and that fact points to a future fact, the day coming in the future when we will stand before the judgment throne of an all-knowing and all-powerful God. And for some, that can be scary. But that's why these words from Jesus are so important to us. When the risen Jesus appears to us and to them, he said, peace be with you. Jesus' words proclaim peace to his disciples. His word proclaimed the peace of forgiveness to each one of us. For of our sins. Jesus showed his disciples his hands, the very same hands of his body that were nailed to the cross in our place. And now that very same body that sometime in the future we will receive as we celebrate the Lord's Supper once again. Jesus showed his disciples his side, the very same side of his body that was pierced at his death and that blood flowed from the same blood that was shed to wipe away all our sins and now the very same blood that yes once again we will receive as we take the Lord's Supper Jesus comes to you in word and sacrament with his divine mission accomplished he takes away your fear of sin and death Places it with holiness and forgiveness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus comes to you today to take away death and hell from your future 
and replace it with life and heaven. Peace be with you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Jesus gathered disciples, certainly had a bad case of fear before Jesus appeared to them. But I will venture to say that they also had a bad case of meaninglessness. I mean, with Jesus dead, so they thought, of course, what was their purpose anymore? What was the reason for even coming together other than the reality and misery loves company? If Jesus really was dead and remained dead, I mean, above, about all they could do was become the charter members of the organization of X, Jesus' disciples. Or if I might put it more bluntly, as St. Paul writes, if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. The resurrection appearance of Jesus replaced their meaninglessness with a major mission that drives the church, that should drive you and me each and every day of our lives. The text says, Jesus said again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. And so Jesus repeats shalom, statement of peace, and attaches it to a mission that he had for his disciples. And just as God the Father sent Jesus out on a specific mission to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world, so God the Son was now sending these disciples, and yes, all disciples, out on a specific mission to preach the good news about salvation and redemption through Jesus and to give others peace. I believe what should make us sit up and take notice is the specific mission Jesus gives to his church. It's not a political message. We hear a lot about those, don't we? It's not a social message. Oh, we hear that all the time. And it's not an environmental message. No, it is quite simply a message about forgiveness from God. As his disciples preached the gospel to the world, if they came across repentant persons who turned to faith, those disciples would have the privilege announcing and delivering God's forgiveness. And if they came across the gospel message about Jesus, those disciples had the responsibility to announce that God was holding their sins against them until such a time that they did repent. It's just as Luther described in the small catechism under the office of the keys. The use of the keys is that special power and right which Christ gave to his church on earth to forgive the sins of penitent sinners, but refuse forgiveness to the impenitent as long as they do not repent. Well, what is the God-ordained mission that the risen Jesus has given us? Many pastors, including myself, many times meet people and they will say, Pastor, I don't have any purpose in life. Why does God keep me around? Well, here is your answer. Our mission is to bring salvation that Jesus won at the cross and proved by his resurrection and apply it to those sorrowful and aching hearts that cross our lives. Our mission is to proclaim peace to them. Think about that. Why do we gather for worship? Why did you tune in today? To get a spiritual pep talk? Talk to God's people with a gospel of forgiveness so that they may hear and have their faith strengthened. 
forgiveness through faith in Christ. That's our mission. That's our purpose. That's our calling to proclaim peace. And when we keep that at the center of what we do as a church, that completely changes our views of others inside and outside the church. That completely replaces our false motives and meaninglessness with the mission that the risen Jesus has given to each Yes, my brothers and sisters in Christ, our living Savior, Jesus Christ has replaced our fear of not being forgiven with this heavenly peace of forgiveness. He has replaced our meaninglessness with a divine mission. Live in his peace of forgiveness each day of your life and then carry out your mission to look for others who need his peace. And there are many today that need that. Maybe those others are the ones that are closest to you. Maybe it's time to say peace to your spouse. Maybe it's time to say peace to your children. The peace of the Lord be with you, child. Maybe it's to say peace to our siblings and you children out there, you can say peace too to your parents. Mom and dad, the peace of the Lord be with you. You're telling them you're forgiving them just as Jesus has forgiven you. I don't know about you, what a great way to celebrate that he is risen. He is, he is risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for this time together. We, we ask the Lord that you would, for each one of us, in your own way, strike our hearts with not just the peace of forgiveness, that we would pass that peace on to those around us and those we meet and those who just get in our way sometimes. Lord, be patient with us. Thank you for the peace you have given. Thank you for the mission that you have given us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us rise, please.